All right, come join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what's everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments, to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time where we talk about the big M's coming attractions. What the Q, quick checks, who'll be laughing? You abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Jewel Redundancy, the only podcast we care all in television, entertainment news, and all about the 76th Primetime Emmy Awards with two meals with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... John Berger, third one is... Kyle Bridger, I would say that I am the Eugene Levy to the younger Levy, who I'm just blanking on his name right now, because John... Dan. Huh? Dan Levy. And Dave can be our bright and shining star, Catherine O'Hara. Yeah, that was the... The big surprise at the end of the night, uh, presenting the final award, ripped up the envelope, but had a spare behind. Uh-oh. Don't worry, I got I got a whole spare document of all the stats, all the figures, all the surprises, the snubs, everything that happened at the 76 Primetime Emmy Awards last night. We have so much to get to. We got to jump in because we have this first segment to get through first, and I, I don't have a spare name for that one. Uh, John, what is it? In and out points. Yes, it is in and out points. A lot of TV talk tonight, and we're going to start off with something from the Rolling Stone. They're at it again. Two years ago, we discussed the 100 greatest TV shows of all time. Mm-hmm. Last year, we discussed the, the 50th worst tv decisions of all time but this year they got another list and it's the 100 greatest episodes of all time honestly i was waiting for something like this i feel like this list should have already been done before maybe it was (laughs) like five years ago and it's just like it's like time's a flat circle and they're updating it and Mm. it changes and i'm sure another variety or deadline or somebody tv line had another one of these at some point but um we're going to go through it, you know, look at some of some of these placements here, perusing the list. Mm-hmm. And we'll say we have shows from the 50s through now, like from this year. I don't believe any series got two spots. Like every show, I think, got like one spot. I might have mm. missed one, but that's just what I saw. And it's only narrative dramas and comedy. So you're not going to get any news, reality, sketch, comedy, talk shows, any of that. It's, we're going to have some narrative TV shows here. So mm-hmm. I want to look at uh, let's I'll, I'll talk about the top five as you can see the list scrolling through all 100 on our Twitch and YouTube streams here. But the top five and we can see if there's any grievances with this. Uh, number five is Seinfeld's The Contest. Four mm-hmm. is The Sopranos College. Uh, number three is The Leftovers International Assassin. Number two, The Simpsons Last Exit to Springfield. And number one, Breaking Bad, Ozymandias. All right. So, John, let me get your initial thoughts here. I know you like the number one pick. What do you think about the rest of the the, the five? Gotta be honest, except for maybe the Seinfeld one. I don't think I've seen any of those. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm a little behind on my TV. But, uh, I, you know what? Those are all shows that I've heard very good things about. You know, uh, they all have a lot of accolades. So... Um, nothing, nothing jumps out to me as, um, wrong based off of what I've heard, but, uh, I may not be the most qualified to, but you got, you got to like one. the breaking bad being on top. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Uh, Kyle, what about you? I mean, the contest is iconic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if you haven't seen Seinfeld, I think you're aware of that episode in some way, or it's a pop culture, uh, phenomenon. Um, I really thought Ozymandias that that's one of the, when you sent me the list, that is one of the episodes that I thought for sure was going to be right up there. So I'm not surprised that it's number one and it kind of, uh, brought everything together. Um, uh, the, I for sure can see the leftovers being up there. I'm blanking on what episode that is. I believe that is when Kevin, first goes into that like 
purgatory world. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I will say that Sopranos episode is is really, really good. It's but an early one, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell, like I, I'm still making my way through the Sopranos and yeah. people love it. So it's like what in my mind, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, what makes that a better one than maybe even the one where um uh Chris and Polly are in the woods. Pine Barrens. No? Yeah, that's usually so, a popular episode. Yeah. So that and the college one is very good, but I'm like, what makes that better than maybe that? So uh I'm interested kind of to see the logic behind the picks but you know it is a great episode but um but yeah i'm not surprised i'm interested to know are they taking these episodes at face value or in the context of the entire show yeah that does make a difference very confusing because like huge difference because like with college the sopranos episode that's an early episode you could probably watch that one and know what's going on when you get to like yeah Ozymandias, it's like, does this mean anything to anybody yeah. who hasn't seen the rest of Breaking mm. Bad? I don't know. So it is very interesting um, to think about it that way. Yeah, I wasn't shocked with, number one, I knew Ozymandias would be somewhere in the top five. I also know that Alan Sepinwall, who's Rolling Stone's chief TV critic, great critic, he loves The Sopranos, he loves The Simpsons, so I figured somewhere they're going to be in the top three in some combination or whatever, so like they're going to be up there in that in that top group. But yeah, I mean, no huge quibbles. I mean, with, with the list, uh, other things I noticed with it was like, I believe I believe there's only one series finale that made the cut. It was Six Feet Unders. Mm. Very good episode. Very good finale. One of the best. I saw that there was like three pilots, three premiere episodes of of the show alias Twin Peaks Battlestar Galactica. So it's like, oh, so your best episode was your first episode. And then <laughs> what's that say? <laughs> but I don't know. Um, the thing I want to kind of do, play a little, I don't know, maybe switch out here, is you're probably not supposed to view this rank, the rankings this way, but since it's really only like one episode per show, it's like, can we say that that is the best episode of the series? It, At least, yeah. I mean, maybe we can look at it that way. So yeah, some I agree with, Breaking Bad, you know. Um what we do in the shadows, the episode they picked is on the run. That's the Jackie Daytona the Jackie episode. Jackie Daytona, yeah. That's a, that's a very fun episode. Um, Succession, Connor's wedding. Again, maybe if you haven't been watching the three and a half seasons before that, it may, may not mean as much, but it was a huge, big episode of that show. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with those. It's hard to quibble with some other ones like the office's Dundee's episodes. That's a good episode. Um, everybody loves Raymond. I saw baggage. That's one of the episodes I watched Raymond growing up. And when I first think of that show, that's the episode. I think it's one of those just like, you know, classic, just, you know, marital things. It's like that sums up the show really well. And like mm-hmm. you have something like Frazier's the ski lodge. It's like, I'm still making my way through. I know Kyle is too. Yeah. It's like, but it's like it's a one set play of misunderstandings. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, that kind of sums up. I feel like Frazier pretty well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is very good. There's one that I didn't see on here that I still think about from time to time was the night of pilot episode. Mm, that's that where, was, yeah. where we see see we see the makings of everything that he's going to be battling with his entire time. And it just is like soul crushing and it's sad. And um, I think to me, that's still one of the best episodes uh, I've seen. It was really, really good. Um, And just, if we are taking up, you know, one episode, I think that that is one that really gets me, even if it didn't make this list, I don't even see it on here, but that's one that I think about. Um, but you're right. I think that's my the the I just saw the Game of Thrones one passes like yeah. I want to ask ba- you about that battle one. Of, like the battle of the the bastards is great. The red wedding episode is great. Like all those episodes are really really good. So yeah. they went with a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. Is is that up I there? Be I mean. It's a season eight episode. Season eight, which I think is like a questionable, you know, season. So it's it's just so, yeah. 
Mm. I just wonder what the the logic is. Yeah, John, is. what do you think? Um, I think that was probably one of the last episodes before it really started plummeting. Mm. If I if it's the one I'm thinking of, I'd have to go look it up and actually see. But if it's the one I'm thinking of, that was like that was like when everyone was like all hyped and they were like, oh yeah, it's gonna be great. And then it just kind of went after that, you know, like yeah. <laughs> Because there is some, like, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with, with the list. Like, I saw, like, Veep had, like, testimony. I've been re-watching Veep, and there's, sure, there's some great, there's a great moment of, like, they go run through Jonah's, like, nicknames, but I feel like it's lacking in other spots, and there's definitely ones that are better, I think. Mm. Always Sunny, they had Mac Bangs, Dennis's mom. I mean, I it's been a while. This is season two. It's been a long time, but I feel like other ones are more iconic to me in my head. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I'll just run through a list. Like the day man, day man. That's uh, yep. The nightman cometh. Uh, we have the gang gets held hostage. Frank sets sweet D on fire. The Dennis yeah. system. Charlie McDennis who pooped yeah. the bed. Mac and Charlie write a movie. It's like I was like I was scrolling <laughs> on the Wikipedia page and I'm like, there's so many episodes. And then it's like some of these have their individual Wikipedia pages, which this episode and number eighty on the list doesn't even have it. So it's like, oh, maybe it is. These other ones are more iconic. There's a whole Wikipedia page about mm. them. Mm. Uh, one last one I want to bring up, though, get John's thoughts on this one, too, is, is Better Call Saul's Fun and Games. Number 18 on the list, season six, episode nine. This is the episode. I'll keep it as spoiler free as I can. Um, after um, uh, Jimmy and Kim and Howard had an unexpected visitor arrive to their apartment. And this is the episode right after that. Mm -hmm. And this thing really kind of focused on like the, the write up about it, why it was this episode was like on the, I love you exchange. And then the blunt time jump. And I feel like I'd argue that the season, like the episode before it planned an execution was better. I mean, chicanery is my personal favorite. Um, is it the one with Michael McKean? Yes. His, yeah. His, yeah. On the yeah. stand. Like, yeah. And I think that kind of sums up the show a bit more. Like, again, this is an episode like other than that last little bit where we jumped to breaking bad. It's like, would this have worked on its own without the mm. buildup of all those characters? I'm not yeah. sure, yeah. but yeah, but I can't quibble. 18 on the list, you know. But, mm. <laughs> all right, um, we could keep going through the list, but we got so much to do tonight. I want to jump to, um, I guess a couple of streaming services that ah, they didn't have any content on this list, and and they won't because unfortunately. Over the summer, Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment, the parent company that operates Redbox and Crackle, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, after failing to employ employees and vendors for at least four weeks, while Redboxes will be shut down, that also means no more original programming from the DVD kiosk service. Pouring one out for Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. What's the overhead on these boxes that they need to yeah. cancel the boxes? <laughs> like, don't they just sit there and collect money? Like... <laughs> I guess, but maybe it's like the DVDs, like or the Blu-rays or whatever's in them at this point. It's like we're not buying any new ones, so it's like maybe, we're stopping yeah. now. So like, no new movies after this point. Well, um, are they even making physical media for new that's stuff also anymore true. at this that's point? Also true. I don't know, but I'm sure Red Box could probably have a special run made for whatever they wanted if they had the money for it. But I you know, mean, if they're not they even, don't. <laughs> I mean, I agree. But if they're not even willing to give the give the uh dvd to the their stars in their in their own shows mm -hmm. like yeah they're like here's a link to and here's the password it's like no can i get a dvd and they won't even do that for their own stars uh, so well i think the difference is they're probably making like 50 for the stars whereas i'm sure red box would probably buy a couple thousand you know what i mean like yeah it's probably a volume difference but yeah, yeah. no i totally agree that they're You'd have to you'd have to have an in to to do that. And yeah, probably have some kind of volume pricing. Um, I mean, for deal and all that. For like, you could have an intern just burning DVDs <laughs> in the back for your stars. It's like, geez, what are we I, doing? I just remember those memes. I think it was like during like COVID. Like, isn't there just somebody in the box like passing <laughs> yeah. the DVDs? Like, oh, which one do you want? Here it is. There you go. Like, yeah. Um, but anyways, no more chicken soup for the soul entertainment. But we will still have some chicken-related original programming from another company. The fast food chain Chick-fil-A is moving into the entertainment space with plans to launch a slate of originals on its own streaming platform. Deadline reported that the fast food uh, 
restaurant has been working with a number of major production companies, including some of the studios, to create family-friendly shows, particularly in the unscripted space. There's also in talks to license acquired content. It's the best paragraph from the whole article. Chick-fil-A, known for its fried chicken sandwiches, is the latest company outside of the entertainment industry to move into making its own originals. It joins the likes of Lyft, which has produced shows such as Lucky Lyft, a game show hosted by Bob the Drag Queen, and Airbnb, which previously produced the documentary Gay Chorus Deep South that aired on MTV. Okay, I was going to say, there is no way that Chick-fil-A <laughs> is using the company that did that. Yep. So I had to like do read between the lines here because this is a company that d doesn't even open on Sundays yep. and they're not going to do no, Bob no, no. the Drag Queen and no. Gay Chorus Deep South. So <laughs> No, they're, they're, they're uh, working on, let's see, a uh, family-friendly game show from Glassman Media, the company behind NBC's The Wall and Michael Sugar's Sugar 23, which is behind series such as Netflix's 13 Reasons Why. I don't know how a family-friendly game show... I understand The Wall. Don't understand 13 Reasons Why. I don't understand Yeah, that producer involved. But who's excited for some Chick-fil-A content? John, you you uh, going to sign up for the streaming service? Only if we cover an episode on the show. All right. I'll hold you to it. I'll hold you to it. <laughs> Do I get like a free yeah, Chick-fil-A sandwich. sandwich if I subscribe or something? Maybe it can be like Apple TV Plus. Like if you buy an iPhone, you get like three months of Apple TV Plus. You buy a chicken sandwich, you get a a, a week of Chick-fil-A <laughs> yeah. programming. Oh, wait, wait. They give you uh, uh, an access code for one episode of a show. Yeah. yeah. And then you got to go back next week to get your next episode. Yeah. You, you, you know what you you know you what that reminds me of? Yeah, with your meal. You know what yeah. that reminds me of? That reminds me of the, like the little Mountain Dew Pepsi caps. Yeah. The codes? Yeah, where you had the codes. Are we just like <laughs> looping everything back around? Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, man. But I still don't get this. I mean, it must be dirt cheap to make this stuff. But it wasn't dirt cheap for chicken soup for the soul entertainment. I but I guess it's like everyone is in the media landscape is like no one is making money. Like, this is the worst. And then everyone's like, hey, we got to get in this. And it's just like. I it's, think it's like it's like this like false thing of like, hey, look at all this money out there. It's like, yeah, it worked for Disney. It worked for, you know, like these giant corporations. Like, you you guys are late. You guys are late to this party. Yeah. Oh, you're going to make Chick-fil-A plus? Like, and look, and you got to be big now to stand out because there's ones like Max and Paramount Plus and peacock that are dying and they're run by huge corporations yeah. like, unless it's like we're we're just using this to funnel audiences back to chick-fil-a yeah. i mean and those it's under that maybe. guys you know maybe but uh, like is it where are they showing this at kiosks when you're ordering like what where i, I think you're gonna watch it at, at home oh my download God. the app I don't know. I'm just waiting for the Chick Fil A Hallmark collab. Or <laughs> Did something. we watch? There was something with KFC. I feel like it was like starring Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders. I'm I'm remembering oh that. Oh my now. god! Yeah, it was yeah, like I a think there was. taste of seduction or some dumb thing. I don't know. <laughs> it was like I don't know. Yeah, but, it's so stupid, man. I don't know. Well, I'm, we're all gonna I'll... laugh when Chick Fil A cleans up at the 77th Emmy Awards, <laughs> yeah. right? But. How okay. into Chick Fil A do you have to be to subscribe to whatever they're putting down? I don't know if they have the Gus Fring uh, spinoff show Los Pollos Hermanos or something. Yeah. <laughs> I might, I might be in. I might be in. But yeah. all right, I, I mentioned the Emmys. No Chick Fil A programming nominated this year, but we're going to talk about everything that happened at last night's seventy six Primetime Emmy Awards that took place on ABC. A lot to talk about tonight. Going into the night, Shogun led with 25 total nominations, followed by The Bear with 23 and Only Murders in Building with 21. If we looked at the major nominations, those featured in the primetime broadcast, we had The Morning Show leading with 11, The Bear next with 9, and then The Crown and Shogun with 8. But after the ceremony, we have some records brokering, some new leaders, Three shows led with both total wins and ceremony wins. But those three weren't able to win all the top three prizes. 
So Shogun led total wins with 18. The Bear was next with 11. And then Baby Reindeer followed with six. Those three shows all scored four major wins during the ceremony. But it was actually Hacks, which had three major wins, to upset the Bear for Outstanding mm-hmm. Comedy Series. So we're going to break down drama, comedy, limited, you know, throughout the thing. But overall, Kyle, your thoughts on those leaders? I mean, I'm not surprised at all. They had the most nominations for a reason. Uh, I really like Shogun this year. Uh, it probably deserves all the wins it got. Uh, the Bear um, was very good in season two. And Baby Reindeer was like the limited series that was very popular. So I'm not surprised by any of the wins. Um, besides Hacks winning for comedy, I think maybe uh, the voting body just thought, hey, we'll recognize individual greatness for the bear, but as a show, Hacks is a comedy. comedy. Hacks is a comedy and the bear is not. Even though the bear season two was probably better than the bear season one. Yeah. And we will talk about that for sure. I have a lot of thoughts about the bear and and what won and what didn't win in the comedy Mm -hmm. race, but I, we, I don't want to, you know, forget about um, Shogun here because 18 Emmy wins. Mm -hmm. That's the most one show has received in a single year. So that's a record right there. Mm -hmm. What's also wild is Shogun broke this record even before those four ceremony wins. Mm -hmm. So going in after the creative arts Emmys, they had 14 wins, which was already the record for Mm -hmm. a show in a year. So tonight it won drama, drama directing lead actor, lead actress, and drama se- <clears throat> drama series. This is also the first drama series win for FX. Huge night for Shogun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, would you say it's the strongest drama category? The pr- I, I mean, probably no. not. No. So, I mean, it makes sense with the year, with the way that the year panned out, that they're top-notch. I, they had a very, very good show. And so it makes sense that they won all those awards on, uh, I wouldn't say a weak year, but uh, a more a, a down year. year. I mean, yeah, we, we looked at we talked about them in our prediction shows and our nomination reaction. It's like, you know, I know we you guys like Fallout, but like it's, is there an Emmy show? Like Three Body Problem, that was a weird, like it got mm-hmm. a slot, you know. The, the, you look at both. Yeah, it was, it was, I think of the three top, categories it was probably the weakest mm-hmm. group um of the three but uh despite those records and all those wins it didn't miss out on some of the other categories um uh, there was no nomination for shogun in supporting actress so elizabeth debicki won as predicted mm-hmm. as we thought for the crown I, I think she say. i oh, think she ahead. probably elizabeth debicki was very good i even shogun i think she would have be whoever shogun puts up there mm. i think yeah. yeah i could see that and then but i will say in our predictions i had billy crudup you did one he won for supporting actor yep. they love that morning show they love that billy crudup yeah um yeah so we got that one in there um uh, can i just yeah. say billy crudup he gave his speech he was giving me serial killer vibes dude yeah. i don't know what it was about this. i think it was just a Monster. lot of tea billy crudup's story or <laughs> season three it was on just Netflix. very it just the speech gave me cre- creep like serial killer vibes i don't know why but mm-hmm. yeah but um and then we had uh, uh will smith not that mm-hmm. will smith he he mm-hmm. made a point to say that he said i come in peace yeah um he won um i guess it may be a surprise for solo horses um winning for drama writing mm-hmm. there's there was two shogun nominees there maybe they canceled each other out i don't know but there was some love. I mean, I've been seeing it online for Slow Horses. I just think it's yeah. like one of those like little watch shows because Apple yeah. TV Plus, I feel like never advertises any of their shows. But mm-hmm. that's a conversation for another time. But um, I feel like it's a it's in the same line of like Ripley, where mm. when I think when I thought of Ripley, it was like, oh, it is a great show. But am I going to have to really like invest mm-hmm. myself yeah. into I'm really going to have to take this hour or so or like really slow is in the title yeah. i mean yeah so 
Uh, but I think I've heard great things about yeah. it, so I'm not I'm not surprised that it won something there. Yeah. Any other thoughts on um drama? Any drama wins before we move on? Um. Hmm. No. Any, any other awards that we 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 missed, Kyle? Any any other that drama? we missed? Well, I mean, like you know, with our predictions, I already called you out. I mean, these were fun predictions. There were no um yeah bet on these, but I know I had the Billy Crude up. I think we had our our Shogun actors correct. Let's yeah, the Bicky. I think we did pretty good with drama. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Comedy yeah, is where it went a little awry. Mm hmm. Because yeah. I think we thought like, you know, fishes would, you know, be unstoppable, picking mm -hmm. up both writing and directing and comedy, but it only got directing. Writing went to hacks. Yeah. And it wasn't as strong of a night for the bear as we as we alluded to earlier. And that's saying something, because we went in knowing it broke the comedy nomination record for a single year. And it still beat its own record for the most wins for a comedy series in one year. Had 10 wins in fit or in January, 11 year or 11 this year. So it broke its own record, but it still wasn't as big as mm -hmm. you thought it would have been, which mm -hmm. is kind of weird to say. Like, yes, the bear did receive directing, lead actor in a comedy, both supporting wins, but it missed out on some other big ones, like lead actress and and also in comedy series. And there's a lot to break down with this. And like we've both been saying, I believe on like the previous two Emmy pods, it's like I really think it's a bit of like this eligibility confusion. I think it's a little bit of comedy backlash because like Edmund Moss Backrack won for Forks again for that episode. Yeah. So like he, he's won it twice for the same episode, yes. pretty much in the minds of the people. If yeah, definitely. Like last year when season two aired during season one voting, it helped him win that one because he didn't really, I don't know if needed it for season one, but season two, that was in their minds. They voted for Forks. Now he's actually up for Forks. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, season three aired. He got, he got it for Forks. But what's interesting, we see like the same thing happen again on repeat for Liza Cole and Zayas. Her supporting win. Because I think that was a surprise for both of us. We didn't have yeah. her on our Will Win or Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. Because she didn't have anything really in season two. Yeah. She had a great season three standalone episode powerhouse episode and that's what they saw yeah so she got the nomination without season three it's like oh that was like a nice a kind of surprise i think but then season three helped her win for season two mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a, it's, 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 it's backwards it's, it's yeah, very it confusing weird. and i don't know what that means for season four mm -hmm. when Season three will be up next year. And she actually has a great standalone episode. Will she get yeah. two again for the same episode? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe she'll have another great episode season four. I don't know. But yeah, we had Hannah Einbinder, didn't we? Yeah, I think, yeah. you know, I think that was a good bet, especially yeah. with the hacks love. You know, I mean, if you look at the the category um, lead actress, I believe I, I know I predicted Gene Smart for the will win. I owe for the dark horse. I don't yep. know. I don't remember if you had the same or. You yeah, I'm pretty them. sure I had the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So because Io won supporting actress last year, but this year she went to lead. The same category that Quinta Brunson won the year mm -hmm. before, but this is the first time Gene Smart is facing those competitors. And when it all came down to it, the bear didn't win. Gene Smart won. It was another hacks win. So I don't know. I mean, it's like it wasn't the right move you know maybe like who knows maybe io against liza in the supporting actress that would have been a more interesting matchup yeah but, but I, I didn't realize they love gene smart man oh that they, did. they stood Stand, for gene smart yes yeah, that's what i was saying i had those stats i was crazy like, they love gene smart wow yeah that was that was really surprising they love her a lot a lot a lot a lot it, but i will say it was funny in her speech though i don't know if you caught it where she's like, oh, I want to thank HBO Max. I mean, Max, like she like, and like she's like, we don't need our service. And yeah. she pretty much was like calling out this BS because she even can't remember. Is it HBO? Is it HBO Max? Is it Max? Yeah. Is it now? Is it go? I I, I don't know. I, I just collect the check. I don't know. Like, <laughs> but yeah. 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 I mean, I think it is one of those things where 
let's uh celebrate the actual comedy i've been watching i've seen a couple of episodes of season two three whatever it is now um and it is good it is a it is so kind of better because i remember we weren't in on it in that first yeah. episode or two yeah it is, i mean it is good i mean it is about you know the comedic world and and you know the representation in comedy and all that so it is about the industry as a whole and they for sure love that you know so because it's always a fine line with that because it's like you get the studio 60 of it all where it's like a show trying to take like comedy like a little bit seriously i feel like this is probably a little bit more i'm not saying it's 30 rock but like it's probably poking itself a little bit more than like studio 60 took how serious it was well yeah i think it it does balance this thing where it's not the other two where we're yeah. making total fun of it, but we're finding the, the moments to make fun of it, but uh, there's also some positive elements to it, or this is what we like about the industry, or this is what keeps us coming back or, or, yeah. you know, so um, I think that's what the industry likes about it. And, yeah. you know, it's, I, it is smartly written. And that's what, help them win for comedy series that was one of the biggest upsets of the night i mean because mm-hmm. you look at the awards sure it picked up lead actress it picked up writing but like the bear had plenty you know directing uh i had the previous week's uh casting for a comedy series the creative arts that win is usually somewhat of a predictor for series mm-hmm. so that could have helped it but i think there was just so much like so so feelings about season three so while season two helped season one last year win Season three may have hurt season two a bit because, you know, there were some mixed feelings on it. But I think one thing a lot of people agreed with, which I saw again last night on Twitter, the show isn't a comedy. Mm -hmm. And I think they were like, we're not going to punish the performers. We are going to, you know, maybe send a message to the producers or whatever it is and say, Hacks is a comedy. It's going to win comedy series. We're not going to give a drama comedy series again. And the host even had a great kind of uh, a jab at it in their opening monologue. And he said, I know some of you might be expecting us to joke about whether the bear is really a comedy, but in the true spirit of the bear, we will not be making any jokes. Yeah. That was a good zinger. Mm-hmm. And I saw a lot of, you know, folks afterwards even kind of complaining about Jeremy Allen White's win. And it's like, he's never said a single humorous thing or even maybe cracked a smile mm. in three seasons. Yet yeah. He's now two for two. And it's like, will that I like, I wouldn't be shocked if next year he doesn't win. Like, I think they might be like, all right, we got Steve Martin, Martin Short, Larry David here. Like, we got yeah. comedians doing comedy. Let's award comedians. <laughs> like, yeah. Even though he's that's great a... doing what he's doing. Yeah. But it's not a comedic performance. Yeah. And I don't know if it's, uh, yeah, like you said, an eligibility thing or a categorical thing, how these things get decided. It really is not fair to him because he's just going out and he's putting forth his best effort, but it isn't it isn't really comedy. He's doing great dramatic work. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I will now, say I, I will say though, I almost want to take away one of the Bears wins and do a write-in vote to take away uh Evan Moss Backrack's win after that terrible live ad for Johnny yeah. Walker Liquor. I was going to mention that it was, t- dude, it was awkward. It was he weird. He like stared into the camera at one point, like I think looking for the teleprompter and what he was supposed to read. Oh, it was stilted it dialogue. It was so crazy. I know it was like, I mean, it was probably any, nobody could act how cringy this script was for this like, yeah. clear ad for this uh, liquor brand. But I will say I felt a little better when he, you know, when he was about to, because they went immediately to presenting the next award and he kind of made a jab. I was like, Oh, that was something. Like, let's do that again or something. Like, <laughs> so, like, it was that. It's like he he knew that that did not play right. Yeah. So I feel a little bit better. But man, that was that was rough. Yeah, I don't know why. What was it for, Johnny Walker? I think it's for Johnny Walker. I think. Yeah, they should have. I mean, they must have paid a pretty penny for that. But it was weird, man. It was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. So, any other thoughts with with comedy? Because yeah, the Johnny Walker ad definitely also did not have comedy. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we discussed pretty much all of it. I was going to ask you what you thought if the bear 
Can the bear switch over to drama? It could. I mean, it's not the first time. I mean, if you go back to Orange is the New Black, um, I believe first two seasons were comedy, had some wins, but then it got transitioned to drama when they mm -hmm. said, hey, this is an hour long show. It's more dramatic. Sure, there's comedy moments, but there's more dramatic moments. And they moved it to that. Not the same, but like, you know, True Detective, I believe, yeah, season one and two were in drama series because Matthew McConaughey was up against Brian Cranston mm -hmm. for season one. But now we're seeing it. It's in limited series. So things can can move yeah. around a bit. But So my question to you is, if we put The Bear season two in the drama category, Ooh. does Shogun, what that what is that I don't know. like? I mean, it might lose a couple, but like, there, I, I get, I get, I mean, I think, I mean, if we look at how it went with um, uh, this night, it's like maybe Evan, you know, still wins for supporting actor. Mm -hmm. Um, probably Debicki still wins for supporting actress. I don't know about the lead performances. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if Jeremy has it. Um, win this and then. I don't know with the the amount it, Shogun won. It might have been Shogun still. Yeah, I think initially, you know, the bear maybe was running away from Succession because that was the juggernaut for a few years, and mm -hmm. you know, like next year we're gonna have it. HBO is gonna come back pretty strong. You're gonna have uh, the White Lotus, House of the Dragon, The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. I think there's a few other missing. Maybe Industry. I don't know. Like there's gonna be yeah. a lot of stuff. And it's actually kind of funny because we kind of, you know, in the prediction pod, we were like, oh, kind of a rough year for HBO with total nominations. But it's like, they're the ones laughing here because they still got a series win. Mm -hmm. They still have one yeah. of the top four shows in the night. Yeah. So I will say whatever this FX, Hulu, whatever yeah. FX is on a yeah on a good trajectory. I mean, yeah. They do have good quality content. I mean, sometimes it ebbs and flows, but it, it they've done very, very well for themselves recently. So that's good. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's now move to our last like kind of category of the night, which is a uh, limited or anthology series. Great night for Richard Gadd, as we talked about. Most wins for an individual performer, I believe, last night here. And he got three. He got producing, writing, and for starring in Baby Reindeer. Mm -hmm. Baby Reindeer also won for a supporting actress, but... This is Netflix's third limited series uh, big win in the last four years. So their three out of the last four limited series were from Netflix. A mm -hmm. little sad we couldn't share the wealth as I you know, talked about last week. It's like I was really hoping. I think it was my I think I had Gad as my will win. Andrew Scott as my dark horse, I believe. I wanted Andrew Scott. That was what my heart yeah. was going for. Yeah. He missed out on lead actor for Ripley, but. At least Ripley won for uh, directing. He it got also three Creative Arts Emmys, including for cin for cinematography. So that's nice. But man, yeah, I just I, I'm like one of those like people where it's like, uh, Richard G Richard Gad did great. Baby Reindeer's good, but like, can we? Okay, he can get for producing and writing. Can we give this one? You know, acting to Andrew Scott. Can we just share the wealth a little bit? Mm -hmm. Does he really need three? Can we give him two? You know, that's yeah. that's all. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I wanted Andrew Scott to win, but uh, they really, I mean, they really love Baby Reindeer. So, yeah, and, and that's what like happened, happened last year with Beef. It's like they really love Beef. Mm -hmm. All the awards for Beef. But I feel like that's where Netflix, if they could find a good couple of limited series, I think that they can shine in that area because they've got the money to make those like longer movie type series yeah. that can showcase, you know, I think they could do really well in that category, you know, keep continually. Yeah. yeah so. Cause I, I think like, you know, if we look at like last year, obviously with, with beef, but they also had Dahmer in mm -hmm. this category. Um, the year before they lost to the white Lotus, which again, now is in drama series, but um, you know, like, I think I think inventing Anna was one of their nominees that year. So they always have something in there. The year before Queen's Gambit, mm -hmm. like they they always are unbelievable, unorthodox. Yeah, they they've had some some good stuff in this in this category, but um, the ones that didn't win, 
was lead actress in, let's see, uh, supporting actor, um, lead actress, Jodie Foster, of course. I, I believe I had that. I think we both had that one. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. you had Juno Tempo. I can't remember. But no, I had Jodie Foster. Yeah. yeah so uh, she won for True Detective Night Country, or as she called it, True Detective North Country. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just picking on her. I mean, she's. She has more Emmys than I ever will, so she gets the last laugh. But and all of us combined, uh, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's like I thought maybe like you know there could have been some Juno Temple love, like but it's Jodie Foster. It's just as you saw with her, another standing ovation. Mm -hmm. This was her kind of yeah. big moment, you know, going to TV. But the Fargo win, I wasn't expecting. I don't think anyone was expecting. We didn't have it on our list. I don't think. I think maybe on that like gold derby top five or whatever. I think he was five. Yeah. Lamorne Morris. Surprise, yeah. Surprise of the night for sure. I think I love him. I love him. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm a big fan of him and his work in new girl and, and everything with that. But I think it was just a surprise. He beat, you know, Jonathan Bailey, John Hawks, Robert Downey Jr. Uh -huh. A lot of people had that on the list, but these two wins actually for, for Morris and for Foster are actually the first acting wins for True Detective and Fargo. That's wild. It's wild to think about. Wow. That is wild. I didn't believe that first. Considering that first season of True Detective. Yeah, because it met Matthew McConaughey and Woody Harrelson, same category yeah. up against Brian Cranston. Yeah. And, and then, then just the number of actors that have come after, mm, even Marshall though this year. Lee, yeah. yeah. Colin, I think Colin Farrell, right? Was yeah. Yeah. And uh, Rachel McAdams, even though that series season was meh, but um, but I mean everyone yeah. in Fargo, I mean mm -hmm. Billy Bob Thornton, Martin Freeman, Allison Tolman, Colin Hanks, like that, that's yeah. just season one. I mean, yeah. Joaquin Woodbine, uh, I Patrick think Wilson. I mean, there's yeah. just so many Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons. It's just a lot of nominations, but mm -hmm. yeah. I think John Hamm was getting more love, yeah, awards wise for this season than Lamorne well, Morris. So yeah, yeah I mean, he was stuck in lead actor against Richard Gedd. Maybe they were like, uh maybe the the being nominated two key categories was like, oh he's in supporting actor for this and uh for morning show he's in lead actor for this for Fargo. It's like eh he'll he'll win the other one. I'll vote for this person over here. And it's like mm. well if everyone thinks that way. Yeah. But yeah. But good for good for uh Lamorne Morris. Yeah. Uh yeah just a surprise. But good, good for him. Yeah, definitely the surprise of the night. Mm -hmm. Um, let's talk a little bit about the ceremony a little bit here. Mm -hmm. uh, Eugene and Dan Levy hosted it. Overall, I thought it was pretty fun. I mean, nothing too crazy. Still a good time for me. Eugene Levy, he'll always get me. Like you know, I know the punchline before he says it, but just his delivery yeah. will still crack me up. Like there was this bit where they were in the wrong aisles, you know, for presenting the next award, and I knew the punchline would be, you know, when Dan, you know, threw it to Eugene that he wouldn't be able to read the teleprompter. And that's what it mm -hmm. was, but it's still it still got me. Yeah. It's just it's just the delivery of it all. But uh mm -hmm. what do you think of how they hosted? I mean, I thought it was very industry like yeah. favorable. It's very they weren't gonna take yeah, cutting remarks like maybe a Kimmel would or yeah. Gervais and, or something. They they're like, you know, they're decent jokes that are gonna fly with everyone they weren't gonna yeah the, get anyone down um i thought they were fine it's very like sticky like uh steve martin martin mm -hmm. short type of vibe to them um so i thought it was fine i think it's good for this sh type of show i think it works for this type of show i think they're likable um, and I think, you know, they're willing to make fun of themselves a little bit. So then it kind of takes a little bit of heat away from anyone else. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was perfectly yeah, fine. fine. And, and I think, I think sometimes what, with a host, it's like, you don't want to be, yeah, you don't want it. Yeah. It's just like, get, get through it, uh, and do just keep the thing. It going. Yeah. And make some jokes and they were fine. And like you said, you could sometimes see the punchline, but they're good comedic actors. So I think it worked. I think it worked fine. Yeah. You brought up Martin Short and uh, Steve Martin here. 
that was kind of like my like one of like the WTF uh, moments with I I like their banter and like the 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 timing the back and forth. Well, the the thing we got a couple of times, maybe it's a joke I'm just just missing, is the shingles doesn't care graphic over them. Uh, like there's multiple times where it's like shingles doesn't care, and I I don't think know it's if I that's what I is think that it's just from. They're no, I think it's just they're old. I I, I mean I took it as that. I mean, is like I'll, they're I'll, old I'll, and they would I'll get see if I can shing Google it real quick. But shingles, like, but it's just like. It's like an ad because they're old oh, maybe for shingles. A, there might be a commercial, but like, it's just, I guess maybe it's playing to that audience because I think like the majority of people like don't watch TV with ads anymore. So yeah. I have no. In fact, I think yeah. they're right after this. What's kind of funny is right after this thing, when they cut to the next commercial, it was for plaque psoriasis. <laughs> mm. So mm. I think it is making fun of that. Like, Oh, we're old. You get shingles when you're old and it'll get you. It gets everyone. And even me, Martin short, I, I think, I don't know. Could be. Another thing I want to bring up is, um, I guess while we're in this section, I'm jumping around a bit here is a moment that didn't really work for me. Maybe a low point was after the in memoriam, and we have mm -hmm. Kimmel walk out and he says, mm -hmm. and the Emmy for deceased individual, we will miss most goes to. Yeah, it was weird. It, it was mm -hmm. an awkward mm -hmm. moment. Just the yeah. line because he like the delivery of it, the, the actual but, line. Uh, and also but, just after the in memoriam song, yeah. it's like we're, we don't need this. I don't know. It just felt really weird. And then when he did his whole speech, you can also tell from the audience, it kind of just like stopped. I think the yeah. audience expected more. And then they're like, oh, that's it. Okay. Like, it was odd. Well, it's because normally when you come from the in memoriam, you you cut to black, you yeah. fade to black, and we're going to a commercial. This just felt like an extension on it. We didn't know where it was going. It was weird to make a joke after the in memoriam. It just didn't mesh well together. If he had come out and said something, not even jokey, but more like, heartfelt i think it would have resonated a little bit more yeah maybe like but, heartfelt then a joke but like yeah, to start off yeah. with a joke of like also like the award for the one we'll miss the most it's like eh, yeah. i mean like bob newhart's a legend don't get me wrong but i'm sure there's other people in the room where it's actually yeah i like my person because maybe like that's my uncle that's my whatever that's the person i grew up with that's you know yeah. it's just and like I, everyone has their own preference yeah and i think that's the problem with the in memoriam section as a whole is like you get these sections where it's like, oh, that dead person is more meaningful. Yeah. And then they clap for it. It's just so weird. So I think he just could have come out and said like, oh, this guy meant a lot for this TV. Yeah. Here's why. And then maybe give a a joke about, I don't know, what something that happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I, I mean, yeah. I don't know where you want to go from here. I was going to mention wherever you want to go. Yeah. Um, what do you got so, for the ceremony? I, I mean, I don't. It, it, all of these guys, Billy Crystal, Martin Short, Steve Martin, like I can, the, the shtick wears old on me. Yeah. But Billy Crystal had a great line when he first came out. And he's like, he was saying something, this, that. And it's actually, it's good to be anywhere, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. mm -hmm. it was like, yeah, where have you been? What are you doing? It's just good to have me back. So that was funny. That was a good line. Um, and then the fact that John Oliver was about to say something yeah. heartfelt and then got played off and it was just like this, the, the timing could the timing, have been better yeah. because it's like, he started saying it and then the music, you know, came up and he's like, well, the joke's on you because this pet I'm talking about is dead. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Perfect music for this. Yeah. And, and then, then he's like, you know, I feel like, uh, what was it? Sarah McLaughlin. Yeah. Yeah. And then they had to stop the music. You know, it was, it was, that was a good, the timing, like they couldn't have planned mm -hmm. it better. And it just shows how good Oliver is, um, you know, rolling with the punches there. But, and then, sorry, to go back yeah. to the in memoriam section. Uh -oh. And I wasn't going to mention this on the podcast, but I think it's fair game. So I think it's fine. So, <laughs> John, have you ever heard of the artist Jelly Roll? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> Okay, they're about to announce the in memoriam section. All right. 
And you know how, and they're they they get this solemn voiceover. They they just cut to this, and then they're like, and now to sing the in memoriam jelly roll. And it's like it's the most yeah. comedic no. like Man. time, like it's not supposed to be a joke, but it's just like, how am I supposed to take this seriously with yeah. a guy named Jelly Roll? And then you cut to him and he's got like tattoos all of his face. Not saying that's bad, but the comedic timing on it is hilarious. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like if I said something like I joked with Dave, I sent him a text. It's like, and now to sing the in memoriam, Entenmann's loaf cake. It could be like anything. It could be like <laughs> the real Slim Shady. It's like, this is so like, what are we doing here? You couldn't even go by his like real name. It's just so weird. The comedic yeah. timing of it was so funny. I had no idea what to expect because they were teasing it all night. Like a very special performance by Jelly Roll. I'm like, don't know what that is. Like, don't yeah. know what, you know, who that is. Never heard of this before. But then again, like, I saw the ads for like the VMAs recently. It's like special performances by. I oh, recognize yeah. like two out of t- the 10 names. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm old. It's not for me anymore. Yep. I get it. Whatever. Okay. Yep. But um, speaking of uh, being old, uh, a lot of nice reunions and celebrations throughout the Emmys. I feel like we have had um some weird milestones in years past. I feel like it was like last year or the year before. It was like the 17th anniversary of this show. It's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. what are we doing? But this was like the 25th for West Wing and 50 years for um for Happy Days in SNL. I thought they were all um nice little tributes. Mm-hmm. They also did like this thing where they like celebrated like TV archetypes um throughout the broadcast. They did like villains doctors coaches cops lawyers all this stuff they they did like tv dads tv moms and it was just fun to see like who they ended up like picking you know like for villains we had like we had homelander and gus and um mm-hmm. kathy bates um that was a good misery thing, but like yeah. it's like funny it's like it's like oh yeah. for matlock but like um stuff like that but then it's like it's also like you can kind of like see like where where are we spending the money because like the TV dads, they got like this full set. They had a pool table, couch, lounger, you know, man cave, beer garden kind of thing. And then the women was it was front of like a green screen. <laughs> it's just like, mm, what are we doing here, guys? Yeah, like, yeah. That's some choices. Uh, yeah, like which ones we're gonna build a set for, and which ones? Yeah, we'll just we'll just we'll send them out there. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll find a background on Getty Images and use yeah. that. But, um. Any other like ceremony moments, Kyle? Because I have some um, other wins I'll talk about from the creative arts. I'll just run through real quick. But any other ceremony I think moments? I mentioned the ceremony moments that yeah. uh, kind of stuck out to me. But yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Like it was no, you it know, was pretty basic. And a lot of the picks, you know, a lot of the wins were pretty chalk as we've been predicting. But like mm-hmm. when I was good for those surprises, because I feel like if it was the bear, the bear, like. You know, like for that mm-hmm. last award or, you know, you know, I don't know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. instead of Lamar Morris. It's like those wins added to some of the excitement, some of the surprises and having that little mm-hmm. jolt of energy throughout the night was really helpful. Yeah. But yeah. The ones I was I want to like mention real quick. I was really glad to see uh, Alan coming uh, not only win uh, for hosting the Traders last week, but the Traders season two great season. Um, one for reality series as well, mm-hmm. uh, beating the um, kind of the the long running favorite of RuPaul's Drag Race in that yeah. category. So that was and nice like win. the other thing is like his speech seemed genuine about yeah. the show. Like I think he yeah. he really loves does. the show. Yeah. So I think that goes to show you how like how much thought and care they put into the show, and um, if it's a good uh, game show or whatever to be on, I think uh. It it's tells the care that goes into it. Yeah, and then Eric Andre, he's an Emmy winner now oh for the my Eric god. Andre show. Oh my god, he's a maniac, man. The I think this might maniac. be the Tim Robinson category that he won last year. Like it's, it's like short form comedy or drama performer okay. or something. No, uh, I think he should leave this year eligible. So uh, it was nice for Eric Andre to pick up the mantle because yeah, get those two in a in a show together mm-hmm yeah that, for that'd real be something um but the, the last one i want to bring up i want to end the, the show on some sad news some some sad Uh-oh. stats that are going to stay with us forever here so 
the idol it won it won its one emmy and one for choreography so it's one for one oh my gosh which means it has more emmy wins than the entirety of better call saul (laughs) better call saul is not an emmy winner but the idol oh man well hey (laughs) yeah it, it doesn't make sense man it doesn't make sense but all right that's the emmys (laughs) <laughs> no nothing else to end on it's just a sad note of the state of <laughs> awards and how really sometimes they don't mean anything some of the greatest shows and performers have never won michael scott mm-hmm. for the office mm-hmm. uh, george costanza for seinfeld mm-hmm. not emmy winners for those Crazy. Roles. so it was the 18th best episode and they didn't even no? they didn't even vote him in <laughs> No, maybe, maybe, maybe next time. Maybe for those Poyos Hermanos coming to Chick Fil A. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, that is all we got for tonight's episode. That's it for the Emmys for a while. Hopefully, we we did two of these in the last year. Hope hope that's it. Uh, at least until July when we do yeah. nominations. But anyways, a lot of focus on TV. But we're going to be shifting now into movie mode. The next podcast, we're going to settle it up the annual summer box office draft. Uh, We'll we'll talk about some summer movies that we missed, you know, covering throughout the summer. Who won the bet? What were the top movies of the year? And then, you know, in September, October, it's going to be very busy with a lot of releases. Megalopolis, Joker 2, Saturday Night, The Apprentice, so many other Oscar bait movies, which we can talk about. But that's all next time. You can find episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, doerdonsey.com. We are live on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, same exact time, twitch.tv slash doerdonsey. We had some some chatters again tonight. Shout out to Connor and we're Ducky in the chat on Twitch. And you can follow us on social media on, at Twitter and on Instagram at doerdonsey. I got to thank both you guys for joining me tonight. A little later than usual. Mm -hmm. But uh, John, directing the show, a lot of moving parts, a lot of images, a lot of things to take care of in a very short turnaround time. Thank you guys so much. And until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm John Burke. And I'm Cobberger. And that's all we got for Doer Duncey. Goodbye, everybody.